Okay, we're going to do a fly that uh, you've probably seen a few times by now, but it's in super fast speed. Um, this is the complex twist bugger, and uh, we're going to tie it in olive. It's a, it's been a really good fly for us. We're we're doing it in a bunch of different colors, but this olive one is probably my favorite. Anyway, I've got a size four uh, Allen S402 in the vise, uh, and I've got a four millimeter tungsten bead on it. And for this one, I'm just going to use 3 aught uni thread. It's a really thick diameter thread that that uh, covers up stuff really well. For the tail of this fly, I'm going to take a marabou feather, and I, instead of pulling the tips and using the tips like this, I'm actually going to pull the fibers off the side of the feather. And it's actually a good thing if they're a little bit unruly. So I'm going to tie in... Uh, on my river buggers, which are weighted typically, I like to tie in maybe a little bit longer tail than I normally would. And more bushy. So I'm going to pull the feathers off the other side. And I'm going to pull those fibers up, advance my thread under to where the lead is. By the way, that's about nine turns of 025 lead wire. So now, I'm going to add a little bit of flash to the tail. I'm going to put in some Senyo uh, Fusion Dub in tobacco color. And I'm just going to pull out just a hint of it. I'm going to kind of lay, lay that down right on top of the tail. Pull it back over itself. Now usually on a woolly bugger, I tie things in so that you don't have a big uh, tie-in point bump on the back of the fly. Um, but on this one, where I'm going to tie everything in the back, twist it up together, and then advance it forward, I'm actually just going to tie everything in right here in the back, and it's not quite as critical that, that it's all nice and tapered because it's going to cover it up so well. Alright, so I'm going to tie in some polar chenille now. And it's a nice chenille that, that has just the fibers on one side, similar to Palmer chenille, but a little bit different. And I'm just going to tie that in right there at the back. Then I'm going to take the some speckled, um, speckled chenille in lime olive color. Now, this part you can add basically anything that you want into the fly. I typically like to have a chenille that's real long and, and uh, fibery like this, like like uh, the polar chenille or palmer chenille. I like to have a, a more narrow or thin chenille. This is the, the what is it, lime olive. Uh, or, you know, if you have like a copper chenille, something real flashy, but I like it to be kind of a smaller diameter. So I'll tie that in. and a piece of schloppen. So this is a pretty buggy piece of schloppen. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Now, on a traditional bugger, you just got one strand of chenille and one strand of hackle and you wrap the chenille first, you wrap the hackle over it, and then you're good to go. But on this particular fly, I'm going to twist them up and wrap them all at the same time. Now I, I got using normal hackle pliers or trying to put a dubbing loop and trying to make this stuff all stay in a loop. And I found it easier if I could just twist all the materials together. And started using hackle pliers to do that, and I finally just got frustrated and made my own. Now, when I show this to you, right here, you're going to see this is made out of normal components, not very hard to make. We're calling them gator grips. If you want to buy this exact same kind from us, we're going to have them in the store. But anyway, it's super handy because you can open it up, grab onto a bunch of materials, and then the idea is you take your turbo dubbing spinner, the ones we... Uh, have sold to pretty much the whole world at this point and once the gator grip is is on to your materials you just stick your uh, hackle spinner onto that and twist it all up so 
they're actually pretty dang slick. It works really well. So that's what I'm going to do at this point. So I'm going to separate everything out and kind of lay everything down and take my hackle and uh, preen it out a little bit. Um, at this point I'm going to clip on my alligator clip or gator grip and stick my dubbing my turbo twister on there and start twisting it all up. Now sometimes the bearing tool won't necessarily work on it because you're trying to twist up a whole bunch of materials so you kind of have to I don't know if you can see my hands in the background twisting it up. You have to do that a little bit. Now you can see some of the fibers are kind of tangled up. The schloppen's kind of twisted up a little bit. So if you can grab a little comb or a piece of Velcro and just kind of go up and down it, it'll really tease all those fibers out. So you can see that's the loop right there. I mean, that's that's super easy. And not to mention cool, but you're going to have a fly that's going to last a lot longer. So now, if I want to, I can take my dubbing loop tool out of there. I got it by the gator grip, and now I'm just going to use my rotary tool to wrap it forward. Sorry, this fly doesn't work if you don't have a rotary vise. Just kidding. Alright, so I've got it tied in. There's a little bit of room left at the head, and I'm, I'm going to leave that there so I can tie in some other stuff. So I've got it tied off, um, come in here and trim my loop, pretty buggy, right? Just really secure that uh, dubbing loop or the, the loop or the twist, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick stuff out again with my little comb or with a piece of Velcro will work as well. And you can see just how how buggy that thing is. Uh, we've sent people out with this, and you know the way that it moves in the water due to that loop is just amazing. So a little a little kicker that I've been adding on. You can see uh, there's some thread showing here. Maybe not the cleanest finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some ice stub and just kind of create a veil over the fly. But before I do that, I'm just going to take like a brown sharpie and I'm going to color my my thread. This way you can get away with with using uh, white thread for any fly if you just got, have markers. Okay, so I'm going to take just a little bit of ice stub and I'm going to just sparsely put it around the bead and this is a technique that I stole from Mickey Anderson uh, here in Salt Lake. He does it with some of his nymphs. But I'm just going to kind of lock it down with one real tight wrap. And then I'm going to pull those fibers back and take my thread in front. So now you can see that that uh, creates a nice little veil. And uh, usually I'll just do it right on the top of the fly. You could do it on the bottom if you wanted. a real quick quick whip finish and now I'm just going to take my little comb and kind of brush it out so you can see that that nice ice stub just kind of melds right in there something I've been doing a lot more also is I uh, been putting head cement on my flies more got this loon uh, water-based head cement so basically if you just come in here and kind of dab it on the bead um, It'll, it'll absorb right into the fly. But anyway, that's the complex twist bugger. A couple other combinations that work really well is a tail that's stacked yellow, orange, and brown. And then you can use yellow schloppen, brown chenille, orange uh, palmer chenille, or whatever to give it that nice uh, fall look. Another one I did was black and silver that worked really well. Uh, but you know, we are going to post this fly on our website for sale, so you'll see some of the color combos. But anyway, that's the overall technique. Give it a tie, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.